Which brace is best for me? Well, bracing has to be seen as an evolution. The earliest braces, interestingly, come from the 1600s and they were built by armorers, like the same person that's making uh, the armor for a knight made the first braces. But then what happened is over the years, many different brace designs came into vogue. And oftentimes they're, they're named after a city. Like for example, you have a Boston brace, you have a Providence brace. The earliest brace is the Milwaukee brace. That originally was designed to be used post-surgery and it was designed that the person would have surgery and then they would go into that brace to stabilize them while the bones kind of like set from the fusion. That brace was brutal. Why? Because it had a cervical piece that went up under the jaw. It didn't push the head up, but the kid's chin was sitting on this piece to try to get them to extend themselves up further so that it would get rid of the collapse. And these kids often develop jaw problems. The brace was very uncomfortable. After that, they began to develop another type of brace, which was a plastic brace. The, the Milwaukee brace was actually made out of leather and aluminum. The next evolution of bracing was plastic, and the first braces there were the Boston brace, which is a, a nowadays it's a, it can be a custom design brace, but many of the Boston braces are still off the shelf braces. In other words, there's like small, medium, and large, and they get that brace and they put padding inside to try to customize it to the kid. You have a, and, and the bad thing about that brace beyond the fact that it's not often customized is that it opens at the back. So it's very awkward for the kid to get in and out of it themselves. They need to have assistance. I don't like those braces. Then you have a Providence brace. These are the nighttime braces. Providence brace, Charleston brace. These braces are designed only to be used at night. And we find that the research is saying limited in efficacy. They're, they're okay for small curves, but they're very limited in what they're good for. Then you have the, the European braces. For example, the Chano brace, the Rigo brace. These are braces that are three-dimensional and they're the earliest of the three-dimensional braces. And then you have something called the Scoli brace, which is a later generation of braces, which is overcorrective, three-dimensional and lifting brace. So you have many, many brace designs. I, I would say there would be almost as many brace designs as there would be hospitals because many hospitals have an in-house orthotist who has his own take on these braces and will develop his own brace design. Thanks for watching. I hope you found all this information helpful. Please subscribe if you'd like to have more information about scoliosis and don't forget to hit the bell. That'll alert you whenever we publish new information. And if you've got any questions, write them in the comments field and I'm gonna make sure to address them in a future video. Thanks for watching.